Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. Today is Monday, February the 12th. It is exactly 7.44 a.m. And today, I want to come to you to bring you a word about baptism, okay? Now, just a reminder, I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything about the Bible, but I do read it, I do study it, and I do practice it. So, if you haven't been baptized, and if you don't know what a relationship with Christ looks like, maybe this is for you. All right, here we go. We're going to read the book of Acts. In Acts 2, 2.14, the Peter Peter addresses the crowd. Okay? Here we go. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And, e and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to, to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him. As yourselves know, this man was handed over to by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My blood also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was but he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God was raised. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he was received from the Father. He promised, he promised Holy Spirit and was poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord, is, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let, <clears throat> therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who, accept, those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their numbers this day. If you're watching this video right now, I know that's a lot to take in, and you may have to go back and reread it for yourselves to get a better understanding, but that is Acts... Um, that is Acts 2.14 all the way through uh, 40. But if you haven't read that, I want to encourage you to go back and reread that. Read where Peter addresses the crowd. And if you haven't been baptized, let me just remind you, paraphrase what this Bible verse just said. In there, they said that they rejoiced. And I guess when people saw the people who had been baptized, it was 9 a.m. in the morning, and because they were excited with the power of the Holy Spirit, people thought that they were, I guess, I guess when you see, uh, you know, a person that's feeling good and has had a few shots and maybe a few drinks of alcohol, I mean, if you've done that, you know what it feels like. I mean, I know what it feels like. I mean, we've, at some point, have drank alcohol and, and had a past life before this one, right? And so that's what I guess they were experiencing was the excitement, the fulfillment, the fullness of the Holy Spirit inside of them. And so when people would see them, they thought they were drunk and, and I guess just acting belligerent or whatever the case may have been. But in reality, what it was, was the power of the Holy Spirit inside of them. So if you have never been baptized and that's something you would like to do, I would strongly say reach out to somebody so that they can baptize you. And like Peter said, you will be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So what the Holy Spirit does is that it gives you excitement, it convicts you, it leads you, it shows you all truth, it, dis it, it gives discernment for you, it helps you understand things in life when you don't understand it. He's also an advocate and he goes to the Father before, you know, if you don't have anything to say or don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit will um, will advocate uh, on your behalf. So he's like the middleman between <clears throat> between me and God, right? So if you've never been baptized, um, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, um, this video right here is actually uh, a call for you either to message me. Uh, you can comment below. You can say, hey, you know what? I want to be baptized. I want to be, uh, I want to have a relationship with Christ. I want to surrender everything that I'm doing. If that's you and this is something that you want to do, uh, you don't have to specifically reach out to me, but reach out to somebody in your church, reach out to your pastor. And the same excitement that the apostles and, and the 3,000 that were with them, the same excitement that they were uh, showing to people who did not have a relationship with Jesus, the same excitement that was flowing through them is the same type of excitement that you can have within yourself and when you're in a storm and you're struggling, uh, that's who you lean on is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, will, will guide you through everything. And the Holy Spirit will allow your mind to be at peace, your heart to be at peace. Um, I'm not trying to, this, this video right here sounds like I'm trying to teach a prosperity gospel, but I'm really not. What I'm saying is, is that if you have not been baptized, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ today, is the day to step out in faith and say, hey, you know what? I don't know who this Jesus is. I don't know what he does, but I want to have a relationship with him. I want to try this out, you know. A uh, quick, short little story. Uh, I have a guy who um, who came to me uh, a few days ago, last week sometime, and, and wanted some deliverance. He wanted deliverance because he had uh, been messing with him, uh, witchcraft and stuff like that, and I guess warlocks or whatnot, you know. So I know the deliver the deliverance ministry is something that a lot of people do not talk about, along with mental health and uh, those things. So um, you know, anyways, get back to the subject. My bad. 
Um, but he reached out to me for deliverance, you know, and I will say this, like I said, I'm not trying to teach a, a prosperity gospel because you and I both know that when we follow Christ, uh, Ephesians says to put on the full armor of God. He says to be prepared because we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right? Those principalities are actually uh, spirits that we cannot see. So if we cannot see the spirits, that's why sometimes you feel frustrated aggravated, annoyed. These are all spirits that are attacking you. And you may not realize it, but these spirits can eventually have a uh, breakdown inside of your, if they can get inside of your mind, they will break down your mind. And then you will, in a sense, start having some type of behavioral issues, some mental illness, uh, thoughts of depression, thoughts of suicide, thoughts of anxiety. You will have all these things, right? But if you are baptized and reborn again, through Christ, you will be set free and all that will be gone away. Now, there are door, there are doors that you can still open up even after being baptized and after being a Christian because just because you've been baptized and you're a Christian does not mean that you're completely saved. You still have to be obedient to God's word, God's will. And if you have been baptized and you are opening up doorways or portals in a sense, like you're watching uh, demonic movies or you're watching scary movies or you're uh, doing something that, you know, in a sense, opens up the back door in your house. The front door might be closed and they can't come in through the front door. But if you go and you indulge in these things, you open up the back door and that's how the spirits come in. So that so if that's something that you're dealing with and that and that you're struggling with uh, mental health, with anxiety, depression, fear. Uh, you know, uh, isolating yourself. If you're if you're struggling with uh, being out in public and society, and you just feel like everybody's just staring at you, and you feel some type of way, uh, I will say that there is a deliverance, and and you you do need deliverance. Um, so for those of you that do not know what deliverance is, um, reach out to me or uh, reach out to somebody that that does deliverance. But these things are very real, and I know a lot of people don't talk about it, but today. If you're watching this video, I'm going to pray for you, okay? I'm going to pray for you, and if you say, you know what? I want to share the good news. I want to feel excited. I want my passion. I want to I want to feel like I felt when I was a kid, when I was on my bicycle, on the trampoline, and I just want to feel that same type of excitement times 10. I'm going to tell you right now, every single morning with God in your corner, on your right side and Jesus to your left, you got these two haymakers, okay? And you go out there and you fight and they give you the strength, the energy, the joy. Uh, when times get tough, Jesus is in your corner along with God and they're there with you to remind you that you're not in this world by yourself. And He rem and he's going to remind you that he sent you into this world for a plan and a purpose. And there's family members that you have out there that you can reach. So if you don't do this for anybody else, do it for your mama, do it for your children, do it for your loved ones, because your loved ones, uh, that's the ones that you can reach personally. You can show them this video all day long. You can show them the pasture. You can show them a different sermon. But at the end of the day, those people are going to observe you. One of my biggest testimonies about my mom and my father, okay? Catholics their whole life. And with my walk with Christ, uh, long story short, I began to model with them and show them by example and, and sharing stories. I didn't I didn't force the Bible on them. I didn't force them to read the Bible. I didn't force them to read anything. But I within myself, I, the Holy Spirit told me, you have to show them by example. You have to lead by example. And so if if you're trying to uh, lead your family to Christ, you have to show them by example. And when this young man reached out to me the other day and he needed some deliverance, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. Some of those things, uh, people do not want to mess with, with the devils. People do not want to mess with the spirits. And I get it. You're scared. The churches do not teach on deliverance. The churches do not teach on how to pick up your sword and go fight, right? And so 
that might be a new chapter in my life, but I'm excited. I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm ready to lay hands on you. I'm ready to pray for you. I mean, I've been ready to lay hands on you, pray for you, but this season, I want to go a little, little deeper, and I want to go into the darkness where the church does not go, and the church is not willing to go out into the streets and minister to people, lay hands on people, pray for people, cast out demons, uh, bind up witches and warlocks and sorcery and all that kind of evil stuff. So this season, Lord willing, if it's his will, I, along with those of you who are watching, uh, if you're interested in getting equipped and learning on how to go and, and do deliverance and things of those natures, uh, inbox me or somewhere in the future, I'll drop a, a, a comment or an address and we're going to start uh, meeting up somewhere to fellowship outside of the church so that way we can get into maybe some different types of teaching that is all biblical it's in the bible but maybe some of the churches don't touch base on it if you get what i'm saying so if you're watching this video i want to say be baptized if it's in your heart if you feel the conviction it's your decision nobody's forcing you but if you say bernardo i want my life to change i want to be different if that's you I want you to pray with me, okay? And then whatever else God speaks to you after that prayer or throughout this day, that is completely between you and God, okay? So, uh, Corey, what's up, Corey? Y'all keep me in your prayers. I recently got baptized. I have 40 day clean and sober today and I can't do this. Hey, man, bro, congratulations, man. That is the best decision ever. And that's what I'm talking about, man. The excitement, uh, reaching out for prayer, uh, if you need prayer, man, don't let pride or or don't let the pride get the best of you. Uh, prayer works, okay? I'm a living, walking, talking proof of it, and that's my testimony. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer, Father. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for Corey Lavoy, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, as he continues his walk with you in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Father. I pray that you would continue to open up his mind, his heart, his ears. Father, we bind up every every spiritual attack right now, trying to come against Corey in the name of Jesus, Father. Remind him that you created him with a plan and a purpose. And and the word that somebody gave me the other day, Father, is that is that testimony means that you will do it again, Father. And if you did it once, and if you did it for Corey, I know that there's somebody else watching this video, and I know that you will do it again, Father. I know that if you did it for me, you'll do it for somebody else and you'll do it again times uh, a million times infinity because all you want is for your children to be saved and not to the not to perish in the lake of fire which is hell so father we bind up every demonic spirit attack father if that if that's some if there's somebody watching this video right now and they want to be baptized father wherever they're at father i pray in the name of jesus father that you would reach out to them and that you would meet them in their living room floor, in their closet, in their car, as they drive, their eyes do not have to be closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are commanding chains to break off right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We're asking Satan to get back in the name of Jesus, Father. We're actually, actually, you know what? We're not asking. We're telling Satan to get back in the name of Jesus, Father. We're commanding that Satan has no authority, no no say-so over anything that, that your people do in this world, Father. So we just bind him up right now, Father. We shut his mouth in the name of Jesus, Father, and we cast him back to hell where he belongs, Father. If there's somebody watching this video right now, Father, we bind up every demonic spiritual attack right now in the name of Jesus. If that's you, I want you to repeat after me and say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, we bind you up in the name of Jesus and we cast you back to hell where you belong and take your ugly, dumb, un uninformed spirits with you, your spirits that have no, no power, no authority over my vessel. Take those with you too in the name of Jesus and we plead the blood of Christ over us and a hedge of protection over us. Father, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Man, God bless you. Have a great day. It's Monday. Pick up your sword and let's go fight. Peace out.